Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems dealing with comparing fractions. This is the continuation of what we did yesterday on day number 110. Today we'll do, uh, do a few more problems and finally tomorrow we'll do the problem that you see in the book itself which, which appear on page 70. But it says page 70 on it but the problems that we're going to do right now actually are not in the book. It is the same concept that you see on page 70 but the problems are not there. Let's take a look at the very first one. It says we are being asked to comp uh, arrange the pro numbers, arrange them, it says arrange the given quantity from least to greatest, from least to greatest. Let's see what we can do. We have two third, we have three fifth, and we have 0 0.67 0 0.67 first thing first first thing we have to do is is to decide we have to make a, make a decision whether we want to convert everything in decimal or everything into fraction we cannot compare them if they are sitting in different form and to answer to that is what do we want to do we want to do we want to compare this into fractions all of them in which case we can have to convert this guy into fractions or do we want to compare uh, we will convert everything into decimal in which case we can have to convert these two into decimal. And the answer to that question is, we are going to do both. Let's, let's begin, shall we? We are going to do both methods. First thing first, how can we convert this into a whole number? Well, it's very simple. If we were to take 0.67 and multiply it by 100, it will become 67. But we can't simply multi multiply 0.67 by 100 because that will change the value, it will become 67. So whatever we do to the top, we must do to the bottom. And the bottom we have here 1. So now we have 0.67 times 100, which is 67 and 1 times 100 is 100. So essentially we have 67 over 100. Here we have 3 fifth and here we have 2 third. If we can make the denominator the same for everything, it will make our life easier. 3 and 5, they have a least common multiplier of 15 and then we have 100 here. 100 is divisible by 5. 100 is divisible by 5, so 20 hundred would make this, if we have 100, 100 will serve, can serve as a denom common denominator of 5 and a 100, but 3 is, this, is the point, uh, the, the guy that is, that, is, that is the odd guy. In other words, if you, if you want to find the least common denominator, this is what we're getting at, if you want to find the least common denominator of 3, 5, and 100, this is how we do it, 3, 5, and 100, we find a prime factor a factor that is common to at least two of them it doesn't have to be common to all three of them it has to be common to all has to be common to at least two of these numbers and that number would be five five is common to five and a hundred five divided by five is one and hundred divided by five is twenty and this three comes down and that's it that will give you the smallest possible number that you can use as the common denominator least common denominator we could have used we could have used 3 times 5 is 15 and 15 times 100 is 1500. We could have used 1500 as a common denominator and it would have served the purpose. We could have used 1500, we could have used 15,000. Or if you wanted to, if, if you're so inclined, we could have used 15 trillion as the common denominator and it would have done the job. It's just that the bigger the number, the more work we end up doing. Therefore, the tradition is, the convention is, that one looks for the least common denominator. Least common denominator here happens to be 5 times 3 is 15 and 15 times 20 is 300. Or if you like, 5 times 20 is 100 and times 3 is 300. Let's convert everything into 300. What can we multiply 3 by to convert it to 300? It's very simple. Multiply it by 100. Multiply top and bottom by 100. Now we have a denominator of 300. Here we have 100. What can we do with 100 to convert it to 300? Oh, multiply top and bottom by 3. Oh, now we have a denominator of 300. Here we have a 5. We don't want a 5. We want 300. Oh, we need to multiply it by 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 60. We need to multiply it by 60 over 60. Well, 
60 times 5 is 300, 100 times 3 is 100, 300. Everybody has a denominator of 300. Since they have the, since they have the common denominator now, all we have to do is to look at the numerators. 100 times 2 is 200. 80 times 6, 60 times 3 is 180. And 67 times 3 would be 67 times 3 would be 21, 32. Looks like 18 plus 201. Well, there you go. So if you want to arrange them from the least to the greatest, from the least to the greatest, the least is 180. 180 is less than 200, which is less than 200, 201, which is less than 201. That's it. We're done. Now we simply have to put in the corresponding fractions that were given to us, fractions or decimal that were given to us originally. 180 came from 180 came from here. That's the middle guy. 3 fifths is less than 200. Where is 200? 200 is right there. And that came from 2 thirds. Two th which makes perfect sense, of course. Which makes perfect sense because they had a common denominator of 300. 200 over 300 is just 2 thirds. So this is 2 thirds. And finally, 201 came from this guy, which was 0.67. So there you go. They are arranged from least to greatest. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to convert all of them into decimal from the very beginning. Let's, let's do it that way. See what happens. We're going to redo this problem. We're going to convert all of them into decimals. We need the room obviously, so we can have to raise everything. This is already in the decimal, so we don't have to do anything with this guy. We have 3 fifth and 2 third. Let's begin, shall we? By the way, if you do need more practice, if you decide that you want to have, have more practice on, on these problems to prepare you for the exam, you will find that we have solved every single math problem that appear in the fifth edition the previous edition and you will find the solution to the, these problems from day number 1 through 80. Just type in T's math day 1 through 80. And the problems that we are doing today, if you want to see the similar problem in the book, you will find them on day number 18 or you can search for basic math series. I have another series of, which teaches, which, which helps you get your basic math skills uh, in, in proper order and in that series you will type in, look for 64 and 65. Basic math 64 and 65. Well, let's see what we can do here. Two third, two third. We, we know is 0.6. We know is 0.6 repeating. This is how we say 0.6 repeating. We put a dot on the top. Dot tells us that it doesn't end. It just repeats. 0.6 repeating. Three fifth. How? What is three fifth? Do you know what three fifth is? Do you know your fifths? Well, if you don't know your fifths, convert this into a tenth. There we go. Now we have three times two is six, and five times two is ten. Six tenth. And I hope you know your six tenth. 6 tenth is 0.6 and 0.67. Are you still with me? So we had here 0.6 repeating, 0.6 exactly, and 0.67. Well, first thing first, first thing I want to, I know to be noticed is that here we have two digits 0.67 that is given to us originally. It was given to us, but here this quantity 3 fifth is exactly 0.6, it's one digit. So let's introduce one more digit here so that we both have two digits. This is 0.6 repeating, which can be written as, which can be written as, which can be written as 0.66. But that's not the end of it, because if you leave it at 0.66, it looks like this guy is smaller than that guy. Oh, actually, this guy is smaller than that guy. That's it. We are done. They both have two digits. They both have to the 0 0.67, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.60, 0 0.66. And if you like, you don't have to do this last part, but if it makes it easier for you to see, this is 66. This is 60. This is 67. But if you still don't like it, you can multiply all of them by 100. And as long as you multiply every one of them, as long as you multiply every single quantity by 100, as long as you treat all of them in the same way, it's okay. That's it, we are done. From least to greatest, 60 is the least. 60 is smaller than 66, which is smaller than 67. Where does 60 come from? 60 came from here, which was 3 fifth. So 3 fifth is the smallest one. 66 came from here, which was 2 third. 
and this was 0 0.67 there you go this quantity was 0 0.67 originally there is your answer from least to greatest so we can do it either way let's do one more shall we the next one you do it yourself again from least to greatest It's a little tricky, it's not as simple. 2 9, 11 over 50, and 0 0.222. See what you can do. I'll give you 5 seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Well, what can we do? We can't convert this thing to fraction because this thing, if you try to convert this into fraction, it's going to be. If if you do that, this will be. If you if you multiply by a thousand, top and bottom by a thousand, it will become two hundred twenty-two over a thousand. Here, we, in in which case we do have it in 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 the form of fraction, but we have a thousand, we have a fifty, and we have a nine. The least common uh, denominator the, is, is still going to be very large. It's going to be a hell to to, to work with that thing. The quick thing here is, so you have to adapt, you have to adapt to the, based on the situation which, which method is faster. Trying to figure out the common denominator here is a lot of work. Let's not do that. Let's leave everything in the form of decimal. But well, this is already in the form of decimal. How can we convert the middle guy into decimal? How can we convert the middle guy into decimal? Well, that's very simple. We have a 50 at the bottom. If we can somehow convert this to 100, we can divide anything on the top by 100. So there we go. If you multiply top and bottom by 2, we end up with, we end up with 22 over 100, which of course is 0.22. Oh, there you go, we're making progress. So this is 0.22, this guy was 0.222. And what about this guy? This guy we have to do some work. We're going to have to do the long division. Let's do it, shall we? So, we have 2 that is being divided by 9, not the other way around. It is the 2 that is being divided by 9. How many twos? How many twos does? How many? How many nines does two have? How many nines does two have? Two has no nine. It's too puny to have any nines. Let's introduce a decimal. As soon as we introduce a decimal, we introduce a zero. Now Twenty has two nines. Twenty has two nines. Two nines are eighteen. We have a remainder of two. We introduce another zero. Twenty has two nines. Two nines are eighteen. We have a remainder of two. We introduce another zero. Two nines are eighteen. As you can see, it will go on forever, it will go on forever. It never ends. It never ends. This is 0.2 repeating. It is 0.2 repeating. Again, I need the room so I'm going to have to erase everything, but that's what it is. It is 0.2 repeating. Can you see that? It's 0.2 repeating. So the three quantities that are given to us are, are 0.2 repeating. This is how we write it with a dot on top of it. This is exactly 0 0.22. 0 0.22. And this guy was... 0 0.222 we have to have the same number of digits after the zero after the zero but well, here I see three digits here I see two let's introduce a zero here there is only one but of course it's not just one it goes on forever so let's write that as two two now if you were to stop here this is where it gets tricky if you were to stop here you might end up thinking that this is equal to that but it's not this goes on forever where this guy ends. So we have to introduce one more digit. Don't stop right here. Introduce one more digit and stop here. Now, this guy has four digits. These two guys have three digits. We have to introduce one more digit here, here, and here. Now, we are done. Essentially, what we're comparing here is 2,222 versus 2,200 versus 2,220. That's what it is. But if you want, you can convert them into whole number by multiplying everything by 10,000. 10,000 is 4 zero that we get as a 4 decimal, times 10,000, times 10,000. And again, as long as you're doing the same thing for all three of them, you're fine. 10,000 times 0 0.2 repeating is simply going to be 2, 2, 2, 2. And we can stop here if you want, because even though it goes on forever, but that's all we need. 
and this is 2200 and this is 2220 which one is the biggest one this guy is the biggest one 2222 is bigger than 2020 2220 rather 2220 and 2220 is bigger than 2200 except I just realized that the problem asks us to arrange them from least to greatest not from the greatest to least don't make that mistake in the exam we have to arrange them from least to greatest the least is this guy 2200 is smaller than 2220 which is smaller than 2222 where did 2200 came come from? Where did 2200 come from? 2200 came from here. That was 1115. 1150th rather. 1150th is less than 2220 came from there, which was 0 0.22, 0 0.222, and 290. There we go. From the least to the greatest. This is 0.22, this is 0.222. And this is 0.222 forever and ever. This is the smallest, point, point 0.22, which is 22 over 100, is less than this guy. This is 220 over 1000. This is 20, 222 over 1000. And this one just goes on forever. They are arranged from least to greatest. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.